podcast recording has started. So, on Monday, we began a little bit more of a detailed discussion about graphing motion and different types of graphs that we can make to represent the motion of an object. You did a lot of this on your lab report, so I'm hoping that as we go through things today, the process that you went through on your lab report will help you interpret these things, make it a little bit easier to understand certain stuff. So we the first type of graph we talked about was a, there, a time versus position graph. And we said that a time versus position graph can tell us a couple of things. The first two things are pretty obvious. What does a time versus position graph tell us in the obvious sense? Time and position. Time and position. Where something is and when it was there. Okay? So that's pretty obvious. But we also talked about the idea that if we look at that graph a little bit closer and interpret it a little bit more, it can also tell us something else. And what is that something else that a time versus position graph can tell us? Speed. Speed. So we talked about the idea that if you look at the slope of a line, right, and this is our definition of slope back from pre-algebra or algebra 1 or wherever you learned it, right, rise over run, or we can also represent it as delta y over delta x, the change on the y-axis over the change on the x-axis, okay, that if you look at this graph specifically on the y-axis, you have distance measured in meters, and you have uh, time on the x-axis measured in seconds. So if you then calculated the slope, you would get a unit of meters on the top, because that's on the y-axis, and seconds on the bottom, because that's on the x-axis. So you would get meters per second as the unit of the slope. And that means that the slope tells you the velocity. Okay. Good there? All right, on your, uh, on your slides, we, I just kind of went over the beginning of the middle slide in the bottom row, okay? There's a bunch of other questions that go along with that slide, which we will go through here like little bit by little bit as I show you different pictures, and then we can talk about what those pictures mean and stuff like that. I know the room isn't, they're not all that kind of, the room isn't all that big, uh, but I wanted to fit it all in one page, so. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a couple pictures in a row, and then I'm going to ask you to, hey, and you'll see here, just like this, okay, where it says, so it says, describe the motion of the object. So I'm going to present it to you like this. Here's your first graph. This graph shows up in the bottom right-hand corner of your um, of your slides that I gave to you the other day. Okay? Here's what I want you to do. Let's pretend this is a short answer question. And it says, describe the motion of the object. And after it says, describe the motion of the object, over here, in parentheses, it says, three points. Okay? So describe the motion of the object, three points. First thing I want you to do is I want you to, in your head, for 15 seconds, go through, look at this picture, and kind of formulate in your head how you would write the answer to a short answer question that says describe the motion of the object, three points. Okay? You're not going to actually write it, I just want you to think about it. Okay? So, 15 seconds. Describe the motion of this object, three points. Now, talk to the person next to you and see if you guys came up with the same description. Go. It stops, then it speed, then starts going at a constant rate, then stops and goes.
who's farther away from the starting point at a constant speed. Good, because the distance is increasing, right? So it's getting farther away. But during this section here, what do we see about the slope? It's linear, which means the slope of that portion of the graph is what? A straight line. A straight line, which means the slope is constant, right? Then, third point, right? What would we say about that section right there? Correct, but the object stops and it's at rest again. Okay, object stops and at rest again. There's one more thing. I'd probably give you half a point for that. Okay? There's one more thing you probably should tell me about that section there. Okay? Nico, one of the important things you told me about the first section is you know where that object is, yeah. right? Is it at the reference point? Yeah. No. So this object has stopped again, but where is it? Farther away from the reference point that it started. Okay? Does that make sense? So, summarizing here, right? If we see straight lines on a time versus position graph, that's going to represent constant velocities. Okay? Straight lines represent constant velocities. Okay? Now, that's different than a horizontal line, right? A horizontal line means that object is not moving, that object is at rest, because the slope of a horizontal line is equal to what? Zero. Well, the slope of any line is equal to, yeah, the slope of a horizontal line is equal to zero. And in this case, if slope is equal to zero, that means velocity is equal to zero. Okay. Good there? All right, next graph. Describe the motion of the object, three points. 15 seconds, think about it in your head, go. Discuss with the people around you, go. section of the graph. Some besides craft. Nico, go ahead. Oh, it starts at uh, zero. It accelerates for mm. one. It, it moves at a constant velocity Better. for one hour. Okay. And moves at a constant velocity for one hour. And reaches 10 kilometers. Okay, and it ends up 10 kilometers away from where we started. Okay? That's probably more detail than you would need to get to one point, but that's fine. Okay? Uh, I would hear moving with constant velocity would probably give you that one point. Okay? For some credit. Yeah, maybe. All right, second portion of the graph, this section right here, what happened at that point? Come on, we just discussed it. Someone besides graph, someone besides Jill. Beaver. The object stops. Object stops. How long, Beaver? An hour. Hour, okay. Third point, this portion of the graph right here. What would you tell me about that section of the graph? <laughs> this is going to be a non-craft question. Here you go. All right, so somebody else. What, help, what can you tell me about that point, that portion of the graph right there? Some besides Jill. Okay. Go ahead. It increases, it increases its distance. Okay, so it gets farther away. It gets farther away at a constant velocity. Good. So this, it's like slower. Ah, there's the other half a point, right? Because, okay, how do you know it's slower? Because it talks twice as long to get to, like, to move the same amount of distance. Okay, it took twice as long to move the same amount of distance. It took two hours on the x-axis to move up 20 kilometers on the y-axis. What else could we say tells us speed on this graph, Haley? Do we remember? The slope, right? What do you see about the slope of this portion of the graph versus this portion of the graph? It's not as steep. Not as steep, right? Things with steep slope are moving with high speeds. Things with shallow slopes are moving with slower speeds.
Describe the motion of the object. Two points. Discuss. Go. of this graph. One point to describe the first portion of this graph. What is this object doing at the beginning of the graph? Emily? It starts far away from at this point. How far exactly? Five meters. Not that you would have to use that to get your one point, but yo. But what would we say about its motion to begin with? It's not moving. It's not moving. Okay. Emily, do you want to take the second part? Sure. What was this, what was this second point? Backwards at a constant rate. Good. Shall we backwards at a constant rate? Or maybe we would say a little bit more more like general is traveling back towards the reference point, okay? Because, Emily, I could walk this way, right, okay? Or I could walk this way, right? Is there any difference really in my motion walking from that side of the desk to this side of the desk? No. So just be careful with backwards. Right now, I'm okay with you using that, but just be, keep in mind that the way you're facing really doesn't determine which way you're moving, right? Okay. So in this one, right, negative slope, that means that that object is moving in the opposite direction. All right, are you ready for the final exam? No. Is our final exam going to be over the entire year? No, we're taking it right, we're taking it right now. So it's going cool. to be this next slide, Bulls. This is, this is it. This is, this is your final exam grade, the next slide. <laughs> Hope we're paying attention. <laughs> what? What? This class is recorded, so this is the real final. We don't have to take it. Yeah, we don't have to take it. We have proof. We have proof, but what actually is it? Oh, no, it will be a second semester class. Apparently, some of my other Next year, that's next year. Yeah, I think next, think yeah, next year we're supposed to do it. So, some, some departments have decided to do it. I bet I think this year we're going to stick with basically, you know. Not true. But that's what, that's what, that's what the year, that's what the state is going to start doing. You know, we All right. Describe the motion of the object. Five points. Describe the motion of the object. Five points. This is it. Your final, your final exam is five points. That's it. So you missed one point. B. You missed two points. D. More than two. Uh, All right. Fifteen seconds. Think about it. So Rachel, on a test, okay, so if, it, if you really think it goes faster, why do you think it goes faster? Okay, so if, if you said it goes faster because 
its slope is greater than this section, I would give you credit for that, okay? I disagree. I would say that probably this one here and this one here have the same slope, but that's what it looks like to me. But if you could justify, and you said, I think this has a greater slope than that one, I would say, okay, you would understand the concept at least, okay? But yeah, to me, I would say probably that this one and this one have the same speed, right? But I would give you a point for justifying that, right? So that's the fourth section. It continues going forward again, right? Yeah. Right? And then what happens eventually? It stops, but it's farthest away from reference. Good. Five points. I'm okay. Um, is the reference point like zero? The reference point's going to be zero. Now, it said that doesn't necessarily mean we have to start at the reference point, but I'm going to remember like one of the first things we talked about was the idea of coordinate system or frame of reference. We kind of have to have a spot where we're like saying, okay, this is like the center point. This is like where I'm measuring everything from, and then we can do that. We kind of talked about like on a treasure map, right? I gotta know where to start before I start this set of directions, and that's what the reference point's gonna be. Okay. All right, we good there? Good job, all right? So next one. Mm. Hopefully this graph looks somewhat familiar, okay? Never seen it. All right. So you all should, you all should have seen this graph before, right? What is this the graph of? Object rolling down the hill, right? Okay. Curved lines on time versus distance graph indicates a changing speed. Because if the line is curved, what's happening to the slope of that line? It's increasing or decreasing, but more specifically, it is not constant, right? If the slope isn't constant, then the velocity isn't constant. Okay? So, what's physically happening to this object right here? It's acceleration. Okay, that could mean a couple of things, though. What would this object look like if we were looking at it? Positive acceleration. Which means, physically, Mike, what would we it's see? Going it? It's going faster. This is an object that is going faster. Like, which way is this object going faster? Away from the reference point. Away from the reference point, right? Because we start off, right, with kind of a shallow slope, but it's still positive. And then that slope increases, 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 always positive, though. Okay? Good there? Next. What's happening in this picture? is slowing down. Emma, what does it eventually look like this object does? Um, stops. stops, because we eventually end up with a slope that looks pretty close to what? Zero. Pretty close to zero, right? But that slope started real steep, right? And then gradually got less and less and less and less and less. Emma, which way is this object still going, though? Um, away, from the away from the reference point or forwards, or if we want to say it that way, right? Okay. Good there? All right. Next change. So this one is accelerating, right? Specifically, what's happening to this object, Rebel? It's speeding up. It's speeding up. This object is going faster, 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 faster. Even though it is a straight line, right? But because we've changed the y-axis now to represent speed, that object is speeding up. So this is a different kind of graph that we call a time versus velocity graph. In a real duh moment, just like that object sped up right there. <laughs> so. In a real Duh moment, right? What does the time versus velocity graph tell us? Time and velocity, right? It tells us the instantaneous velocity of an object. Are we familiar with the term instantaneous? Instantaneous means like right now. Okay? So if I want to know how fast this object was going at the two second mark, I could find out. Or if I want to find out how fast this object was going at 2.75 seconds, I could find out. So the velocity at a particular moment in time. Okay. Time's going to be on your x-axis. Velocity's going to be on your y-axis. Okay. Just like before, that position graph. Right. In the position versus time graph, we have position on the y-axis or y-axis and time on the x-axis. Okay. Good so far with this. 
let's get out of here for a second. And let's grab this picture. And go here. Okay. So going back to this idea that we did before, we talked about the idea of slope being equal to rise over run, right? And then that also, we said, can be represented with the whole idea of delta y over delta x, okay? But if we look at this graph specifically, what's on our rise axis now? Macy, what's on the y, what's on the rise axis? Meters per second. Okay, meters per second's on the rise axis here, right? Okay, so that means here on the top of this fraction, we have meters per second. And then what's on the, what's on the uh, run axis? Seconds on the run axis, right? Being that we have meters per second over seconds, meters or meters per, per, second. per second per second, right? Per second. Which we said was the unit for acceleration, acceleration. okay? So, the slope on a time versus velocity graph tells us the acceleration of that object. Okay. Not just the fact that it is accelerating, which we can tell from a position versus time graph, right? If the lines are curved, that means it's accelerating. It's either speeding up or slowing down but now we can tell what the actual acceleration is. So if we take a look at this graph here, right? How does this graph start off? What is this object doing at the beginning of this graph here? It's constant motion. Let's go with constant speed. speed. Let's go actually with constant. This is gonna be quite disappointing. This is constant velocity, right? Because we said that the positive and the negative indicate direction for us. So if this is a constant positive five velocity, that means it's moving at the same speed, but also in the same direction. And then, what starts happening to this object? What happens to that object during this section right here? Rachel? It slows down and eventually does what, Rachel? No, not necessarily. Because remember, this the axis is telling you speed, so what eventually happened to this object? It stopped, okay? But this is an important point going forward. The entire time that it was doing this graph, it's <coughs> moving. And even though it's slowing down, right, these values are still all positive. What did we say the sign on velocity tells us? It tells us direction. So even though this object is slowing down, which way is it still going? It's still going forward, even though it's slowing down. So Rachel, does this object end up back at the reference point? You don't really know, because you don't really know where it started. Right? So you can't say that for sure, even though it ended up back at the zero. But remember, that's a speed, not a position. Okay. Good there? All right. You guys ready for final exam number two? Mm -hmm. uh, I think there, I, there's some more words on the final exam. There's a lot of final exams. Well, I mean, that's a little bit. Maybe I should, maybe I should do that. Like every day at the end of class, just give you one question, and that's like one question on your final exam. Just Accumulate that and like just always one like that would still be positive velocity. So it's still moving forward. But it eventually stops. Alright, here we go. So here is a complex velocity graph. Velocity time graph. Uh, to the right of complex velocity time graph. You have six questions. I would like you to take a minute or so and answer those six questions, discussing this with the people around you, because I don't think you guys are ready for some individual analysis just yet. If you want to, feel free to do so, but uh, go ahead and talk to the people around you. So answer those six questions. I will uh, expand this. I'll blow this up a little bit more so you, if you have trouble seeing it, you can see it a little bit better. So. 
All right, let's take one minute to answer those questions, and we'll be back and discuss as a group. change something. So that's why I said, when I first introduced the idea of acceleration, I said, usually we kind of look at positive acceleration as speeding up and negative acceleration as slowing down, but that's not always the case. All right. Are we ready? So here we go. Answers as follows. When is the object at rest? There are two times when this object is at rest. Now, if your, if your numbers are a little bit different than mine, that's okay, as long as we got the general idea, okay? So there are two times when this object is at rest, right? It starts off at rest, so from zero to, I think I called that 25 seconds, but then from this section right in here. In order for an object to be at rest, the velocity graph has to be where? At the zero mark, right? This is not rest, even though it's a flat graph, right? Because this is a velocity graph. It has to be here or here. So there are two times that object is at rest, okay? Traveling forwards with a constant velocity, okay? Between the 55 second mark and the 125 second mark. Once again, if your numbers are just a little bit different than mine, that's okay, okay? Constant velocity we just discussed means that this graph, the velocity graph, is going to look what? How will a constant velocity look on this graph? Um, flat. Flat, horizontal, right? So during this section right here, this is a constant velocity. Is there anywhere else on this graph where there's constant velocity? Technically, isn't where it's zero velocity? Technically, that would be constant velocity as well. It's just constant velocity of zero, okay? 
usually we'll describe that a little differently than moving. So in this question here, it specifically says traveling forwards with constant velocity. But you go that these these velocities are constant as well. They're just constant zero. That's all. Okay. So that would be a perfectly fine answer as well. But if, it, if the question said specifically, and I'll do this to you, right? If it says when is it moving with a constant velocity, then you couldn't then you couldn't include the at rest section. All right, next. When does the object turn around? In order for us to see turning around on a velocity graph, what has to happen? Okay. The velocity has to go to negative. Or, or rest. It would have to go to negative if it was currently what? At rest. Or positive. Positive, right? So here, this velocity was positive here, then it becomes negative. That's a turning around, right? Because the sign on velocity tells you direction. But it could also start what? What if I was, what if I continued this line up, 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 up like this, right? It could start negative and then go positive, okay? As long as it changes sign. If it goes from the positive side to the negative side, that's a turning around or a changing direction. Okay? Good there? Next. When is the object traveling backwards with a constant velocity? The answer, never. Okay? If we look at all of our backwards velocities, all of our negative velocities, do we ever see a constant section anywhere? We don't. Okay. All right. These, these next two are a little bit tricky. Okay? So... 25 seconds to 60 seconds from this section right in here, okay? What is that object doing in this little section right in here? Nika. Accelerating forward. Okay, accelerating forward, increasing but speed. it's increasing speed yeah. because this is also accelerating forward. It's just, decreasing, it's just speed. decreasing speed. So we would say that it is going faster in the forward direction, okay? Scott, go ahead. I put, like, if you had this question on a test, yep. Someone put like its velocity increases at a constant rate. That would be fine. Yes, its velocity increases at a constant rate. Although I might, you should probably give me direction as well, right? Okay. Velocity increases at a constant rate while traveling forward. Okay. Then the last question, and this is probably the trickiest question. Okay. 500 to 600 during this portion of the graph right here. Okay. I don't know. Good. Um. Let's go, instead of saying back towards the starting point, let's say in the backwards direction or in the opposite direction. Because it's hard to tell exactly where you are in relation to the starting point in this picture, but you can tell that it's moving backwards, right? First, Emma, how do you know it's moving backwards? Um, it's in the negative side of the velocity graph, okay? How do you know it's slowing down, Emma? This line is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So that's one of the things you guys have to break, one of the habits that we have to sort of break. The positive and negative on velocity doesn't tell you anything about how fast something is going. It only tells you which direction it's going, right? So in this case here, you have a line that slopes downward. This is slowing down because that line is getting closer to zero. Here. The line is sloping upward, but it's still a slowing down because those numbers are getting closer to zero. All right? Does that make sense? Good? Good for now. We'll do a little bit more of this over the next couple of days, okay? And uh, do a little more practice. You'll definitely see some of these things on the test come next Friday. All right. Let's stop this.